we got the Eldrazi Incursion, which is the next commander deck that we're going to be reviewing. I'm sure this is probably the one that everybody wants to see. 295.80 is the price. Guys, I could tell you that this deck is $70 normally, but I mean, it's, you know. If there's that you're not going to spend seventy dollars recharged by LGS. There's like a ninety nine percent chance it's going to be this one. Yeah, I feel like this deck is going to be super. Um, yeah, you're you're spending at least one hundred thirty dollars on this deck. Safe to say. Um, the commander for this deck is Ulalik. Yeah, remember when we had the commander masters Eldrazi deck and people were selling that for like one hundred ten dollars or whatever? Yeah, and, and that card had that deck. card, bro, bro. That card had a a. Uh, uh, What's that card with the with the bookcase, the sneaking bookcase or something? What is that? You know what I'm talking about, Matt. You gotta know what I'm talking about, dude. Don't leave me hanging. It's, one second, I gotta look it up. It's unblockable or something. No, no, bro, bro, bro. It was the suspicious bookcase, dude. I found it, dude. They put the worst card in the history of Magic: The Gathering. Look at this. They put that card inside of that deck, dude. I could not believe that I was buying an El look at your Eldrazi deck. And inside that deck, they had a suspicious bookcase, bro. I'll never forget. The weird thing that. they did with that is they didn't focus on Eldrazi tribal. They mostly just made it like half artifact creatures, half Eldrazi. Bro, this card was put into a Commander so Masters cool. Commander deck, dude. That's just on a suspicious bookcase, bro. That's a Commander Masters card. Anyway, hopefully there's no suspicious bookcase inside this deck right now. The commander is Ulalek, Fused the Atrocity. Whenever you cast an Eldrazi spell, you may pay two. If you do, copy all spells you control, then copy all other activated and triggered abilities you control. You may choose new targets for the copies. Wow. I mean, what do you think about that, Matt? Uh, seems good, based off of how much you can spam Eldrazi tokens. Yeah, I feel like this card is... Whenever you cast an Eldrazi spell, you may pay two. Oh, never mind, it's a different card. Never mind, you... I was thinking of the commander. Are you looking at Ulalek right now? No, I was looking at the other one for a second, sorry about that. It's all good. Uh, this is Eldrazi. What's up, kid? I see you in the chat, bro. We're doing good, man. I'm just reviewing this. Okay, so this is the one that lets you copy cast triggers essentially. So if you cast like a, I don't know, a Kozilek or whatever, you can draw eight cards. It says and triggered abilities you control. So what it, could you, could you, could you like, think about this. Could you attack, trigger Annihilator, and then cast an Eldrazi, and then pay two mana, and then double the Annihilator? Uh,. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it says yeah, copy. You, you could, but you'd have oh, to give your Eldrazi spell flash. Yeah, you could give a flash. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what. I, that's exactly what I'm doing in this deck, dude. That's exactly yeah, what I'm just doing. You copy everything on the stack. It doesn't say you copy the things from the spell that you just cast. <laughs> yeah, dude. The kids like someone's gonna cheat Eldrazi to play on turn three. Just a casual game is just to destroy somebody. Yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So the yeah, first uh with my Bane of Balgad, get my Annihilator trigger, and then I flash an Eldrazi spell and the Annihilator trigger. Yeah, Matt regularly destroys everyone with Annihilator. I can tell you from that experience. was Annihilator twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a Waste Escape Battle Mage, Kicker, Green and or Colorless and Blue. Um, when you cast a spell, if it was kicked with its kicker, exile target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. And then if it was kicked with the other kicker, return target creature to opponent controls to its owner's hand. I mean, I feel like this card's kind of whack. Am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, it's probably one of the first ones I'd cut. I mean, technically, like, you'd be able to copy that triggered ability with Ulalek. Yeah, technically, you could do that. So, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing that I say would be like, okay, I pay four mana, I exile, 
an enchantment or artifact when I get a creature. It's not instant speed. You play it. It's yeah, whatever. Reasons, now that I'm thinking is cheap is Eldrazi has always been known to have problems with the low curve. It's all the Eldrazi bombs are all are almost all seven or higher, but you need something in the early game. Yeah, this I is just kind of fills that spot. Turn three, you cast it, exile, soul ring. You know, I feel like it's you keep it because it's an Eldrazi, but I just it's, yeah, it doesn't like seem this thing. You have the new Eldrazi from the main set where it's like two drop one where it makes your colorless spells cost minus one less. Yeah, that are seven or higher. Kind of fits in that space. Yeah, I feel like it's just a yeah, it's a card. As as Lask, yeah. the swelling scourge, dude. This card I may just make the regular yeah, that's commander. The one I was at the first time. Yeah, whenever as Lask or another creature, colorless creature you control dies, you get an experience counter <laughs> for three mana. Um, you can pay Wuber creatures you control get plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is the number of experience counters you have. Silence and spawns you control gain indestructible and annihilator until the end of turn. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was talking about the first time. I got Ulock mixed up with this. Yeah, dude, this card just seems like the card that everybody's gonna play. Because you know mm -hmm. how many Eldrazi spawn or Scion cards that exist? It just makes stacks of tokens. You have stuff like Awakening Zone. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, then you just play Gigantha, tap Gigantha for Bluebird, and then you just immediately just... <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it's just it's just a, such a good card right here, man. I, I'm surprised that this card even exists, dude. Because and Annihilator won until the end of turn. Dude, this card is gonna be the bane of a lot of people's playgroups. Telling you. We just have to play a game at where everybody has this card. <laughs> it's just four as last against each other, and it's just everybody's annihilating each other, nobody wins. Yeah, well, you're also playing Wubergs. Like, session or doubling season to double your spawn tokens. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This card and and you're doubling the counters, yeah, like the experience counters you get. Lives, yeah. Oof. Yeah, you could Man. do that also. Yeah, because yeah. you'd be having more scions die because you'd be having more of them. I'm just happy that it doesn't say that it's only annihilator one and not annihilator equals the number of experience counters there are, which would just be. I would just quit playing match the gathering at that point. Psych, I never stop uh, playing. Next card is Chittering Dispatcher. What? So what you're giving me is the challenge of build a proxy as black deck to see how miserable you made in like five minutes. Don't Yeah, you do that. You do that. It's fine. Bring that to the, the tournament. Don't worry, I have an idea already. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you do. Next card is Chittering Dispatcher, Devoid Myriad. When it leaves the battlefield, create a 0 1 Colossal so Jazzy Spawn Creature Token. Okay. So you attack, you get two or three extra copies of this, and then they leave, and then they leave um, some Eldrazi spawns for you to annihilate people with with Aslask. Yep. That's a good card. Next card is Eldrazi Displacer. This card, Matt, this has yeah, to be some type of infinite combo. Because Next card is a Glaring Flesh Raker. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token with... Okay. And then whenever another colorless creature enters the battle under your control, Glaring Flesh, Taker, Flesh Raker deals one damage to each opponent. Okay, so it's like an impact tremors just specifically for um, Eldrazi spawns. It's good. Matt, I think you're back, dude. Yeah, I guess what happens if you stay in the voice chat too long, it just disconnects you at some point. That and um, did it disconnect you? Because I was dropping frames heavy over here too, so it could just have been like an internet surge or something. Yeah, like my laptop should be able to handle this fine. I don't know why it was doing that. No, no, no. I think it was. I was on my end, actually. You're good. Uh, what were you saying about the Dispatcher? Uh, what I was saying about the Dispatcher is because it also has Myriad, those tokens die end of turn, which then mean you get more spawns immediately. That's what I was saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, it's just a really good card. Extra um, value. We talked about the Flesh Raker. It's basically impact tremors on a creature. I don't know if you saw the Flesh Raker. 
Yeah, that's um, a, yeah, I've seen that before. I saw that in the previews. Yeah, that's a fantastic card. We got a mutate a mutated cultist. When you cast a spell, remove all counters from up to one target permanent or opponent. Then expel you cast this turn cost one less. For each counter, remove this way. Wow. That could be crazy. Yeah, it feels like they started making a lot of cards specifically to be anti energy to make up for the fact that they had like five plus years of not having any ways to get rid of counters on players. Yeah, and especially because there's an energy precon in this group. Uh, next yeah, the second energy precon, yeah, because we also had the Fallout one like a month ago. Yeah, we have the Snapping Void Craw. Tap this for two mana. You can pay four mana. Tap it to draw a card. I mean, bro, I think you take this card out of the deck. That's just me, because like it is. We are in any color. I could just swap this out for any Pretty much anything. Yeah. Like a, Elf. The only cool thing about this is sometimes you can draw a card if you get to like late game with this, but it doesn't seem like it's worth running overall. Yeah, and inside these color, but you're in all colors, so it's like I could just. It's not like yeah, in, in the other deck. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. You could just. Yeah, I would take that card out. Uh, vile. Than the green blue deck though that we just reviewed. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that would be good in my deck. We have a uh, vile redeemer flash. Okay, so there's the flash that we were talking about the double up on the Annihilator figure. Um, when you cast Vile Redeemer, you may pay colorless. If you do, put a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it's just going to, for each, oh wait, you're going to put a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield for each non-token creature that died under control this turn. Interesting. Yeah, this fits in that category of anti board boys cards yeah. from earlier, like the green black thyrax thing that makes a bunch of saprolings when your things die yeah i didn't even know this card exists i might put this card in thick war yeah it's a good card it's from up the gate watch yeah we have uh a bismuth mind render wow when this deals damage to a player combat damage that player exiles the top cards from the library until they exile a non-land card you may cast that card by paying life with the spell's mana value rather than paying its mana cost okay you know, I feel like that's good when it's good. I would put that inside the Minnesota also makes it easier to connect also. Yeah, I would put that in the the Grand Larceny Precon with um Gonti. Yeah, yeah, bro, definitely. that's that's amazing in that deck. Um Inversion Behemoth, four mana. At the beginning of combat in your turn, switch the power and toughness of each of any number of target creatures until the end of turn. Wow, this is a two that's nine. Really mid. It's yeah, it's just annoying. It sounds like something an Eldrazi would do. <laughs> You're just like, oh, this is happening now. <laughs> we have a feel like a nine speed, but then it dies to pretty much anything. Yeah. At the beginning of combat on and it's only on your turn of combat, so you know. Yeah, you can't even do any combat manipulation on other people's turns to protect yourself. I mean when it matters what but when it hits, dude, it's gonna when it when it matters it's gonna be huge you know feels we, situational a hundred percent situational we have the sifter of skulls whenever the non-token creature you control dies put a one one card so draws a scion creature token onto the battlefield yeah i mean you want more of those one one creatures right because then you get to trigger annihilator with aslask so or zero one creatures or whatever they are Next one is Ulamog's Nullifier. Flash, another card that's going to allow you to double up on the Annihilator trigger. When Ulamog's Nullifier enters the battlefield, you may put two cards from your opponent's graveyards. Wait, you may put two cards your opponent's own from exile into their owner's graveyards. If you do, counter target spell. So you need your opponents to have... This card isn't isn't this good is because in like the battle for zender card block they had like the pro they had the processors which are cards where you like put cards from your opponent's exile into the graveyard to do stuff they also had a different type of eldrazi that uh when they they put cards into your opponent's exile so they would synergize with each other but i haven't seen any synergy like that in this deck i haven't seen the other type hmm. yeah it's it's so specific i just it, but it could just be something as simple as flash double up annihilator you know uh titans vanguard 
Five mana when you cast a spell. Whenever Titan's Vanguard attacks, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each colorless creature you control. Okay. Oh, that's Trample. I know. Yeah. This is an alright card. Yeah, yeah. Let me give it that. You got an Angelic Aberration. Oh, wow. This card's crazy. This is one of my favorite cards. This when it enters the battlefield, has flying and vigilance and devoid, uh, sacrifice any number of creatures with each base power or toughness one or less. Create that many 4-4 four -four Eldrazi Angels? Dude. Dude. Yeah, so you could essentially turn all your spawns or silence into Sarah Angels, essentially, but yeah. Dude. That card is crazy, bro. I like that card a lot. It's a good one. Deep Fathom Skulker. Imagine that uh, flash. The the Angelic Aberration. Instant speed. That's crazy. It's true. Would be good ambush block. Or, yeah. Deep Fathom Skulker. Whenever creature you control does combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Um, you can give a creature unblockable. That's always good. I mean, for six mana. Mm -hmm. But it's going to draw you cards otherwise. So. I would play Drowner of Hope um, enters the battlefield. You're going to put two Scions into play. You can sack a, a Scion to tap target creature. I mean, again, six mana for this, but we are playing Eldrazi, so that's kind of normal. But I feel like you could take this out. You got Endbringer. Um, you can untap Endbringer under each other player's untap step. You can make a creature not be able to attack or block this turn, which is can be annoying. One damage to any target, or you can draw a card. Yeah, like at six mana, I feel like you could just play other more powerful Drazi. This is one of the better ones, though. You think? Yeah, I mean, you get to I do it so. every Compared turn. Like the last three, the last two we just reviewed between Deep Path and Skulker and Drowner Hope, yeah, it's like three times as better. Yeah. So then this is like a maybe, but the moment you start getting like the real heavy hitters, like if that betrays and stuff like that in your collection, you're probably just like, yeah, this card could probably go. Um, you have the Oblivion Sower and you cast it like this one could go too. you cast it, target opponent, exiles top four cards of the library, put number of lands, and then that's all it does. You know, I feel like this card yeah, also it... goes well. Yeah, but you're playing Eldrazi, you want ways to ramp, and this is just one of the ways. Yeah, you don't really need it because you're playing 5 tower Eldrazi. Yeah. It's also just on theme, though. Yeah. But I would just probably swap it out for something better. Yeah, but you probably could cut it. You probably... It says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player exiles the top two cards of his or her library, and you draw two cards. The Stire of Stagnation. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, seems... Supposed, it's supposed to be like the Consecrated Sphinx version for Eldrazi, essentially. Bro, this card right here is a bomb, dude. I like this. Yeah, it's always been one of my favorites from that set. The Benthic Anomaly. When you cast a spell for each opponent, choose a creature that player controls. Create a token that's a copy of one of those creatures. Except its power is equal to the total power of those creatures. Its toughness is equal to the total toughness of those creatures, and it's a colorless Eldrazi creature. Oof. Wow. Yeah, it's essentially like Mimeoplasm. Yeah, that's kind of wild, dude. I mean... Yeah, whereas Mimeoplasm cared about graveyards, this cares about field. And, and as you cast that, you can pay the two mana to copy it. The yeah, ability. Technically, you could get two tokens, yeah. Oof. Plus two, what is this? A seven, five or something? Yeah. Seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. eight. It's a cool card. It's a fun play. I would have fun doing that. Hideous Taskmaster. When you cast a spell for each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until the end of turn. And tap those creatures. Oh my god. They gain Trample, Haste, and Annihilator 1 until the end of turn. And then this has Trample, Haste, and Annihilator 1. Bro. Dude, this card is so mean. I like this card. It just feels like one of those cards if you just wanted a random bond 
in any bomb, deck. Right deck. You would just put it in. Yeah, exactly. You just play this anywhere. <laughs> wow. For each opponent, getting trouble with the one target creature that plays controls, bro. Yeah, if you were playing like Nile, you'd probably just throw this in in the top end section. That's automatically a Nihilator 4, and then you just play the, the, what's the, what's the, for the time piece that you can tap to just end the turn? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. You just end the turn, then you yes, keep you all the creatures. Keep the creatures yeah. you respond to the trigger and cancel out the trigger, yeah. Bro, that's a great card. Yes, yeah, Sundial to Infinite, but yeah. yeah. We have Morophon, the Boundless. Yeah, you play that. 10 out of 10. So. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. Uh, spawn bed, protector, beginning of your end step, return up to one target Eldrazi card from the river to your hand. Create two, one, one Eldrazi silence. For seven mana, oh, this is a creature. Yeah. I thought it was an enchantment. Well, obviously we're in the creature oh, absolutely pile. not. If this was an enchantment, I'd drop in like five <laughs> seconds. Well, if, what if it was a two mana enchantment? That would be crazy. Uh, okay, that's a bit different. Yeah, yeah. But uh, clearly it's not. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna make a two drop enchantment that makes two mana every single turn cycle. And you get an Odrazi from your graveyard to your hand. Um, yeah, I like this card. I think it's pretty good. I do I do think you having to wait it's here for your end step to get the Eldrazi is kind of a, a thing, but you would have to hope that that would allow you to happen. Or that would be allowed to happen. We have the twins of Discord. Uh, whenever you attack, choose odd or even. Creatures with mana value of that quality can't block this turn. Each other colorless creature you control has bloodthirst too. Okay. So basically you can bloodthirst and copy that trigger over and over again. With um your commander. Yeah, bloodthirst after counters, yeah, when it enters. Yeah, as long as something was deals damage, right? Uh, I think it's combat damage, but yeah. Yeah, so it's, this is a, I mean, for seven mana, eight, six, at least. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it plays into like the Void Winner space where this one's odd or even. Void Winner is you can't even, but yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't like that it happens. It affects you. Because it has creatures. That's it. It says whenever you attack. Yeah, it says when you attack. Oh, then. only when you attack. Okay. Yeah, but you're not going to be blocking when you're attacking. That's fair. That's fair. I, th I thought it was just like literally like Void Winner, where it was just like now this doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, Void Winner is also only opponents, but yeah. Yeah. Next card is the World Breaker, seven mana. When you cast it, exile, target artifact, creature, or land. Um, you can sacrifice the land, pay three mana, return it from your graveyard to your hand. I mean, for seven mana to exile good. something. Nine mana to exile two things. Eh. It's whatever. You can exile two lands. Uh, Elder Deep Fiend. When you cast it, tap up the four target permanents. Yeah, take that out. Ulamox Crusher. Play that in a different deck. I feel like that card is... In a hundred and thirty dollar commander deck, that's a twenty five cent card. Artisan of Kozilek, that's yeah, just card also is really good play wise though. Yeah, I mean it's Annihilator too. But yeah, like instead of Elder Deep Fiend, they could have put Bane of Battle get in the deck. Which, while yeah, it's also a quarter is also like five times as better than it. Yeah, the Bane of Battle get is always good. Yeah, the card's nutty as hell. Yeah, because you destroy everybody with it. And then we have Bane of Algot has Exile Annihilator also. It's not even sacrifice. Yeah, it's just it's just and you do you choose exile? No, no, because they always choose. It's just that exile is more ridiculous than oh, Annihilator. Okay. Exactly. We have Ulamog's Dread Sire, Vigilance, Ward, Sacrifice Permanent with mana value one or greater. Okay. And then you can tap this to create a 10 10 Eldrazi. <laughs> Yo, this card is crazy, dude. You played this with uh, uh, what's that card? Seaborn Muse. Yeah. The card, this card also off. goes infinite with the trigger alarm. Also. 
through. You can play the three drop and pack tremors die. You can play trigger alarm, and then this you just make a token which untaps itself, and then make infinite tokens and infinite burn. So this deck almost has an infinite combo. It has two thirds of it. Yeah. Mm. That's good to say. We got Ugin the Ineffable. A colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast. Yeah, I feel like that's all I need to read from the card because that's basically all you're playing this for. Um, that's it's always going to be good. Yeah, we give that a... That's good. We have Ancient Stirrings. Uh, reveal colorless creature card from among the top five cards in your library and you put it into your hand, rest in the bottom of your library. For one mana inside this deck, you know, I don't know. I feel like you're playing five colors. So I would just rather play like Brainstorm, you know? Yeah, this is one of those cards where if you wanted to lean into like the classic Eldrazi build you play it you just want to like Helm Kozilek or Ulamog is the head yeah so we yeah, have a lot of uh, stuff has D void so yeah you technically can find off of ancient stirrings it just doesn't feel as optimal as other cards yeah I mean the next card is Eldritch Immunity dude one colorless mana target creature control gains protection from each other from each color until the end of turn and you can overload this for five mana yeah card's pretty ridiculous yeah and dude. it's also an instant dude this is this is super crazy yeah because you mean, can just be like hey i swing with all my stuff uh end of attacker phase make all my stuff protection from everything yeah that's just yeah Oh, it says until for some reason, dude. I I just read that it says until the end of turn. I thought it just says gain protection. <laughs> I was like, yo, it is protection from each color till end of turn. Until the end of turn, yeah. I didn't. I forgot that I said until the end of turn. That's what happens when you read seven hundred magic cards in the span of two hours? Next thing is, um, suffer the past. It's X black. This card is bad. This yeah, I don't even feel like reading it. This is just whack. Take the card out of the deck. We got a warping whale. I mean, warping whale puts a token into play. Counter yeah, target sorcery counter spell. Power spell. Yeah, I mean, in the right situation, this works, but not too excited about it. It could be it. a getcha spell. Yeah, against board wipes or something. Um, yeah. Exile target Most creature. This could have just been a path to exile inside this deck that's going to be $130. Um, if this is a tribal yeah, like, instant, an Eldrazi card technically, but yeah. yeah, and then because it's an Eldrazi card, technically you could trigger the Annihilator thing that we were talking about earlier with this. Yeah, because it counts as the spell, so you could copy it with the Ula Lock, yeah. With the with the yeah with the Ula Lek and then Ula, whatever you want to say that, and then and then if you do that on attacks, then you it's double up the on the Annihilator. Dude, everything I'm that's the only thing I'm doing inside the deck is copying an Eyeliner. That's it. Yep. Yeah, well it is true, but that's not the only reason you would do it in the first place, but yeah. For me. We have Kozilex Return. Okay. Is this a this card's already existed? Um deals two damage yeah, to each creature. Walk, yeah. Whenever you cast an Drowsy creature spell with converted mana cost seven or greater, you may exile Ozix Kozilex Return from your graveyard if you do. Cosmic Return deals five damage to each creature. So this is kind of like a, a board wipe. I mean, you're playing all draws, so your draws are going to have like be 10 tens basically. So this could be a one sided yeah, board wipe. The second half is essentially free board wipe, at least for a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Because then this just kind of, it's kind of, wow, this is a weird card. Because it just kind of sits in your graveyard and then just kind of waits. Yeah, the triggered ability in the graveyard. That's interesting. That's very Eldrazi. Eldrazi Confluence. Oh, wow. Target creature gets plus three, minus three. Exile target non land permanent. And then it, it returns back to the battlefield tapped. And then you create a 1-1. One, one. Keeping in mind that you get to choose three, and you can choose the same mode more than once. So you could... Alpha strike somebody. Yeah, you do like confluence and trigger like three ETBs at your things if you wanted to. Yeah, I just wish. 
I just wish this card was an Eldrazi instant. Like like the same thing from the crib swap. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel like this would be Yeah. I mean obviously it'd be better. Yeah, the travel card it probably would be better. It would just look more like what it is. Um next card yeah, is that's always been the problem with tribal. Is some cards that they obviously should be like this for example should be a tribal Eldrazi card, but it's not. Yeah. They just I guess they don't wanna push it too much. We got Return of the yeah, Wild Speaker. Yeah. It's good. Um, selective Obliteration. For each player chooses a color. Each player chooses a color. Then exile each permanent unless it's colorless or it's only the color its controller chose. Okay. It's not good. Yeah, I mean, against a monocolor deck, you're just like, all right, nothing. It happens. literally does nothing. Yeah. Yeah, like if you're playing mono white, I'm just gonna call white and your card does nothing to me. Yeah. Selective obliteration. Next card is Ugin's Insight. Try X where X is Oh god, take this card out of the deck. This card's really bad. Yeah. And uh dude, I'm just also knowing this deck is gonna cost $130. You don't know. Yeah, especially if you look at the next card. No. The next card is like Don't play that. Rich card's expertise. No, I, wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying the next card is like five times better than yeah. it is what I was saying. Exactly. This is what you want to see. Yeah. Cast a spell with mana value five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost to draw that many cards. It's that's a good card. All is dust. That's a super oh, amazing. Draw staple. Yeah. Uh, this is actual. And then you could copy it, technically. I don't know why you would yeah, want to right. copy it, but technically you could. This could also trigger the Annihilator if you can give it a flash. Um, we have Skitter, Skittering Invasion. Um, seven mana put five zero ones. Eldrazi spawns onto the battlefield. Yeah, I feel like I, I was kind of hoping for some way to, to give your cards flash or to cast them at instant speed inside this deck. I feel like... That would have been seen that yet. really cool. Everflowing Chalice, good. Soul Ring, of course. Arcade Signet, good. Idol of Oblivion. We're making a ton of tokens in this deck, so that makes a lot of sense. Wow. Talisman of Curiosity, Dominance, Impulse, and Resilience. So basically, every talisman that's ever existed. Harold's Horn. Harold's Horn. Thank you. Hedron Archive, you're right. Mystic Forge, Eldrazi Monument, of course, why not? Um, Forsaken Monument, cause creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Five seconds. Would you say? No, the Streamstone Hedron you take out in five seconds. Yeah, like when you order this deck from Wizards, just ask to take the Streamstone Hedron out of the deck. This card is, I mean, six mana. It ramps you up to nine mana when you cast it for six mana, you know? But you could also be playing Thrand Anima. But... That's true. You know, but, and it feels like for a $130 commander deck that you might just want to put a Thrand, Th Thrand Dynamo in the deck, but whatever. This is very flavorful, but we'll give it a, you know, it's fine. Thumbs down. Uh, thumbs awakening zone yeah this is amazing and to have this deck especially if you make um ask Lask the, the commander for the deck um garrick's uprising exactly gives all your creatures trample and it gets you to draw cards which is definitely something you're gonna need imprisoned in the moon you know removal whatever like this is a oh my god eldrazi conscription chanted oh i'm very excited to have that i'm probably gonna take that card out of the deck but um i'm definitely looking forward to having that card in my collection now to the lands we have the um this land deals damage to you it just looks like there's a pile of pain lands in here is what it looks like. I feel like that's a good thing. 
Because you need mana fixing if you're playing five towers. Yeah. So at the same time, they also didn't put City of Brass or Mana Confluence in this deck from what I can see. Yeah, I mean, Brush... Yeah, all the pain lands, basically. The Bonner's Enclave, I think, is going to be important. Or just cards that... Or lands that help you to tap mana. Um, this Cascading yeah, Cataracts exactly. is fantastic with Aslask because you can just generate the five colors five mana that you need to activate the annihilator ability yeah that's um, true. caves of coilos um corrupted oh, crossroads uh that command tower yeah this crossroads is interesting pay one life add one man of your add one man of any color to your mana pool spend this mana only to cast a spell with devoid okay eldrazi temple this is a land that's has for two mana if you're casting Eldrazi, which you're probably going to. This land right here just active just you could just use for Ulalex ability. Um we have an exotic orchard, a forest, Carpsalin Forest, Lanamar Wastes, Opulent Palace, Opal Palace. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Path of Ancestry, let's use Scry. So, uh, this time they have Eldrazi Temple in it. What'd you say? I'm glad this time they have Eldrazi Temple in the deck because I don't remember that being in the other one. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember being in the Zaldoc cause, deck. Because technically the Zaldoc wasn't an Eldrazi tribal deck, they said. Yeah, it was just a big color to spell with Matter deck essentially, but yeah. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I've never seen the Tendo Ice Bridge before. Uh, it's from Betrayers of Kamigawa originally, but yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, just a bunch of other decent lands. I mean, what are we saying with this mana base? Uh, pretty good, actually. Yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like it's the pain lands. Better, but it's not not the worst. I do I do wish there were more cards that let you um, draw cards. But we're in five colors, so I don't think it's really that necessary. Like it was inside the yeah, other, um, the other um, colorless deck that they released commander masters so what are you going to give this deck out of 10 probably i want to say it gets like an eight beyond why i think missing is pretty much check lands essentially from stuff that they could realistically put in it yeah it's a few like questionable choices in the mid like the deck choices and like why do they have the octopus thing that taps down creatures instead of being a battle guide or stuff like that yeah there's a few questionable things in the deck but yeah not most of it i think the mana base is really gonna carry it i mean there's there's like one two three four no one's three four five six seven i mean eight nine yeah i mean nine mana rocks is pretty good yeah i feel like for me i i'm gonna give this deck you know i was kind of hoping for like some giant eldrazi obviously there's a huge eldrazi inside here i wanted to see like ulamog or something like that so i, I think i'll right they didn't put any of the titans in the deck that is correct yeah, like I, I think because of that, at a, a hundred, because I, I have to look at this a little differently, because this is going to be the one that's $130. Yeah, um, most likely. I think, I feel like I want to give this deck a seven, dude. Like, I like it a lot, actually. But I feel like at the price point that this deck is going to be at, I feel like it really needed, like, it's, it's, it's really riding on the fact that it's just Eldrazi, which is enough. To be fair, it's enough. Like spending the hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars. What? What'd you say? Yeah, I, I just think it's it's just something that it's just gonna be, you know, it could have been better, but it, it's the name of it kind of carries it, you know. The hype boys and incentive to sell like whenever. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, your mic is um 
is jumping in and out again. I don't know if I'm about to start dropping frames, but uh, your mic is cutting out again. And it's just in time because there's only one more deck left. Matt, do you need like a, like a bathroom break or you want to get some food? We've been reviewing these decks for the past like two hours, dude. And while Matt's doing that, he's fixing his mic. Yo, Kevin. Yo, what up, dude? So what? 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 what where? What part are Bro, you? Bro, we just finished the Eldrazi Incursion deck, dude, and Matt gave it an eight, and I'm kind of like at a seven. I I will I'll also give it an eight. Oh, eight nine. Why? The commander. You don't even have to build it five color. You could just put it. You could just build it as a colorless Eldrazi deck, and it and it goes. It's 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 beyond dumb. It's gonna be crazy, and it's gonna be strong. It's gonna be fun. I was just, I just know that this is the deck that. And I was saying earlier, like I just know this is the deck that people are gonna be spending a hundred and twenty, hundred thirty dollars on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just hoping to see like one of the Eldrazi um, Titans so in the deck. For for what it is now, it, it's let me let me let me let me let me change it up. Mm -hmm. As it is right now, I rate the deck maybe it's you're right, maybe it's seven, right? Out of ten. Um if I rate the deck on what it could be, it's a ten. Yeah. Cause yeah, so you're... it doesn't have any of it doesn't have any of the big name Eldrazi's, right? But you also have another Eldrazi deck that came out. If you have the money for it, you can drop all the or all the really expensive or Um mm -hmm. The the commander is busted. If you find a way to give yourself flash, you can swing in with all your Bill Eldrazi's. You have all your night letter triggers that goes off, and then you just cast an Eldrazi. Pay two, you copy all your annihilator triggers again. And it's also one of those things where it's like a lot of people already have a lot of those Eldrazi too. So it's like now yep. they just have two of them. So that's, I feel like you're kind of convincing me. I think I might give it an eight. But I know that this deck, once people upgrade this thing, is going to be an absolute just monstrosity of a commander deck to play against. 